My name is uh, Tom Snell, and I'm the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce, and I want to thank all of you for coming to attend our annual meeting inaugural for our organization. Thank you very much for attending today. So, whatever. So I, <laughs> uh, moving on, I want again, I want to welcome everybody. I mean, we are the epicenter of the White Bear area, which includes Badness Heights, White Bear, Montemita, and Hugo. And I want to again say this is great attendance and a wonderful opportunity for all of you to hear uh, Lindsey Whalen, the uh, new football coach for the women's basketball team, uh, basketball coach for the women's team at the University of Minnesota. <laughs> Boy, I'm not having a very good day here. So. I want to uh, I want to recognize our sponsors that make this event possible. Uh, Grandma's Bakery, Carlson Chiropractic, Malax Corporate Ventures, Benberg Tire Service, White Bear Lake Magazine, and Avalon Security, which is providing the ride for uh, Lindsay Whalen today. So. Hello, welcome to the uh, 2019 Chamber's inaugural event. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging our past board presidents and chairs in attendance today that have contributed to the vision of the Chamber and thank them for their past years of service. Uh, today we are honored to have nine past presidents, presidents in attendance that go back to 1991. Would you all please stand to be recognized? Thank you. Uh, without you, we would not be where we are today as a chamber. I'd also like to acknowledge the elected government officials in attendance. We have Minnesota State Representative Jamie Becker Finn, Mayor Mary, Mary Lee Abrams with the City of Maplewood, Mayor Joe Emerson with the City of White Bear Lake, and Mayor Tom White of the City of Hugo. We also have managers and administrators from four of our local chamber cities and townships in attendance. Thank you also for attending today. Last but certainly not least, I'd, I would like to welcome all of the new members to our chamber who are in attendance today, and thank you for joining our chamber. Uh, in the tax code, uh, see I'm the CPA, so this gets a little bit boring, but I'll keep it interesting. In the tax code, the Chamber of Commerce is defined as a membership organization, so it goes without saying that without members, we would have no definition or no meaning to operate and exist. So thank you to all of our members who are here today in attendance. Uh, now I would like to officially open the annual meeting. Uh, Maureen, you're back there. Do we have a quorum? All right, quorum's confirmed, so we can continue. Um, let's see, so wrapping up 2018, the Chamber finished on a really excellent uh, note, had a really great year experiencing remarkable growth in both membership investments and participation in our programming. To give you an idea of what that means, financially we set a goal as a Chamber to diversify our revenue streams, uh, placing less reliance on our membership dues. Ten years ago when I started, actually maybe a little bit more than that, as, when I started as Treasurer, we were close to 80% revenue reliance on our membership dues. Today I'm proud to announce that we were less than 60% of uh, reliance on membership dues revenue, which means our revenue was derived from other programming sources. Um, what does this mean? This, this is an importance and very significant to our chamber because what it allows us to do is adapt to uh, market recessions. And past history will tell us that one will be coming again. Um, and when that happens, we'll be able to adapt as a chamber and continue providing high programming content for all of our members without having to worry about membership fluctuations. This is a big, big important thing. It also allows us to do additional programming activities without, without having to uh, focus the increased cost from those activities on our members. In other words, we don't have to increase our membership dues, which is a good thing for all of you. So a big uh, achievement and a huge focus and will be continued focus of our chamber going forward. In 2018, we had over 3,400 attendees participate in our events. We welcomed 65 new business members and our ambassadors greeted 47 of the new businesses into our communities through our sponsored ribbon cuttings, grand openings, and celebrations. Attendance levels increased sig dramatically, significantly at all of our monthly networking events. Um, who, uh, just by quick show of hands, who participates in the morning networking events? Is the room full? We got two spots left. <laughs> two spots left. So, uh, you know, it's a great event. The room is always full. The, uh, you know, I, I don't actually, I'll, I'll admit, 
reluctantly I don't go to that one so I'm not sure if you eat cinnamon rolls or just drink coffee but um, you know the camaraderie, <laughs> camaraderie at the events I'm sure is, is top-notch so a great event the lunchtime networking is always a crowd favorite uh, women's and business group has some of the highest uh, attendance that they've ever had and are doing remarkable things um, so a lot of great activities going on uh, this last year for the ninth year the women and business group purchased and filled over 40 purses for the women who live at solid ground so really great giving back to the community. The Government Affairs Committee is always busy supporting businesses. They meet with legislators and local officials on a regular basis, identifying issues that matter to our, our chamber members. The chamber is effectively advocating for business at the local, state, and federal levels. And God knows there's a lot of stuff going on in the business world, uh, and so we have a lot of issues to address, and, and we're doing our best to stay in front of those for all of our businesses. The Business Education Network was a newly added program in 2018, spearheaded by Sherry Wilson, who's right here. And let's give her a quick round of applause. <laughs> Any chance I get, Sherry? Um, and uh, also worth noting is that it was partnered with Century College. This event, um, for those of you that weren't familiar with it, focused on the field of healthcare um, and the businesses supporting the healthcare industry, and did a phenomenal job of connecting students with employers. Uh, with the goal of bridging the workforce gap in that industry. And it was a really great event. Um, a lot of uh, attendees. I, I uh, share a quick statistic on the number of students. Four. Upwards of 400, 500 students. So um, we're really doing a good job there of connecting those students to uh, future employers. We are happy to give away, speaking of students, happy to give away five $500 scholarships to local students in the area furthering their education. Um, we plan to repeat this again for 2019. In 2018, 17 businesses were visited in partnership with the Grow Minnesota Project, uh, which is designed to determine the needs of businesses in the community. The Grow Minnesota program significantly contributes to the identification of key business issues and allows people like our legislators in attendance today, our chamber leaders, and others get ahead of these issues and continue to make Minnesota the great state that it is. The White Bear Chamber would not be what it is today without Tom Snell. If you haven't noticed, he loves to program events uh, from Sophia the Robot, driverless cars, the impact of tariffs on local businesses, the Lake Links bike trail, rush line, recycling, and more. He's constantly looking for fun, relevant, and sometimes out there, and I'll use out there with quotes, uh, programs to bring the, to other chamber members. It's pretty hard to be bored uh, when Tom was around coming up with new and sometimes uh, wild ideas. And um, if you haven't sat on the board and observed Tom, when we get some of these people coming in to introduce the topics, the grin on his face is literally ear from ear. Uh, and I don't think he hears anything that anybody else is saying because he's completely uh, <laughs> di diving into the, the subject matter at hand and uh, blown away by some of the technological advances that we are having. So this just touches on a portion of the, what the chamber has done and, and is doing annually. Uh, there's rarely a time that I would call downtime because there's always something coming up around the corner. I would like to acknowledge our past uh, retiring leadership. Uh, to those who don't know, each director has served a minimum three years volunteering their special skills uh, to the benefit of the White Bear Area Chamber. We can't thank you enough for your dedication and hard work. So uh, let's see, I'll start with Bob Schlickley. Bob, if you would please come up. Bob is what I would call a seasoned uh, chamber member. <laughs> and, uh, Seasoned, is that all right? That's a, that's a nice word, yes. Uh, he's been involved with the White Barrier Chamber since the 90s, the 1990s, not the 1890s. <laughs> Just to clarify. Uh, and, he, and he served uh, as both advisor and... I didn't write this, by the way. This is, uh, <laughs> with his many years of experience in several chambers, he is always a voice of reason and knowledge. Uh, if ever in need, Bob has always been a phone call away. Um, although he is leaving as director, I'm happy to say that he has accepted to stay on as a year uh, for this next year as one of my advisors. So um, let's see here. We got Bob. We got something for you. So thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Taylor Johnson with Mueller Memorial is also coming off of the chamber as a director. Uh, Taylor's not here. She's catching the warm sun rays in Arizona. But I want to acknowledge Taylor for everything that she has brought to the White Bear area of chamber. Uh, she's a strong cheerleader uh, in our ambassador program as well as our Chamber 101. Her enthusiasm is hard to beat, 
Uh, she's always there to lend a hand with creativity and excitement. Taylor and Miller Memorial are great advocates for the chamber and we are very appreciative of that. Barb Sheldon. Barb, where are you? Can you please come up? There we go. Barb is currently the past chair of the chamber uh, and my personal mentor for this position. Uh, but I would like to acknowledge her for her service. Uh, due to one of our directors moving out of the state, Barb stepped up, extended her term as chair uh, through the first six months of 2018. She has served in several different aspects, volunteer, advisor, director, chair, uh, and now past chair. She has been the committee chair for the annual gala for the last probably 20 years. A long time. Right? Yeah. You're not that old, is that what you said? Oh, okay. She's seasoned. She's seasoned. Uh, she leads with compassion, consistency, empathy, and kindness. And for all of you uh, who know Barb, you know that to be true. Her business savvy and financial fortitude are shown in her strong relationships with large and small businesses, uh, entrepreneurs, and of course the chamber board. Barb, we are so pleased that you're a part of our chamber and thank you for everything that you do. John Lupo, please come on up here. So John Lupo with Grandma's Bakery is our past, past chair. Um, and the reason we're recognizing John is because when Barb extended her term for the six months into 2018, John kindly extended his term for six months of 2018. So John joined the board as a director in 2013 uh, and wasn't told that it was going to last as long as it did, but was chair in 2016 and was finally able to retire from the board after his term was expanded the additional six months. John has been a wonderful leader uh, who provided insightful and compassionate advice and proved to be one of the Chamber's great leaders, which are, we are truly grateful. Thank you, John, for everything you contribute to the Chamber and our community. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Bill Jacobson, if you would please come on up here. So Bill Jacobson with Pine Tree Apple Orchard uh, served as an advisor to the board. Um, prior to that was a board chamber director. Uh, and one of our past chairs. Bill has been around won. forever. He is also a seasoned veteran. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm getting rid of all my seasoned veterans here. This is not good. But uh, So B Bill's been around uh, and involved with the chamber for over 30 years. He served as an advisor, director, uh, and chair from 1991 that I mentioned earlier. That's Bill. So thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah, right. He continues to be a wonderful leader and supporter of the chamber and community. Bill and the whole Jacobson family with their pine tree apple orchard are one of the many reasons that the White Bear area remains a destination for family and visitors statewide. Thank you, Bill, for your constant dedication and leadership. So thanks to each of these wonderful members for having contributed their very special talents and time to the chamber over the past few years. I'd now like to introduce the 2019 board Board members in attendance are asked to stand when you're introduced. Audience, please hold your applause until all have been acknowledged. A complete list of the board members can also be found on your program. So for 2019, our treasurer, Scott Brummelkamp with Midwest One Bank, Brian Carroll with Garlock French Corporation, Laura Kiten, Health East St. John's Hospital, Jeff Kolodzetsky, U Advisors, Carrie Kwapik Masvik, uh, Deluxe Corp, Rick Lucio with Halberg, Halberg Engineers, Matt Merrick with Vico Instruments, Angelia Melander with Century College, Jenny Moore with the White Bear Lake Area Schools, Rita Peckman with Lake Area Bank, who is also serving as our chair elect, Kelly Sam with Malax Corporate Ventures, Tiffany Schmidt with Abramson Schmidt, who is also our corporate secretary, Barb Sheldon with Alaris Bank as our past chair. Tom Snell, Chamber Executive Director, Blaine Stevens with Schooley Mitchell, and our advisors J.P. Jacobson with Pine Tree Apple Orchard, Carter Johnson with Press Publications, and Bob Schlichty with Malax Corporate Ventures. I present to you the 2019 Board of Directors and Advisors of the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. I also uh, need to quickly acknowledge some of the great chamber volunteers who are or have uh, currently led some of the committees and networking groups. Bill Weigel with Morning Networking, 
Sheila Kelly and Liz Wilcox with the Women in Business Networking, Kevin Donovan and Mike Bromelkamp and Kelly Sam with Government Affairs, Jason Headstrand and Craig Hart with lunch, uh, the Lunch Break Networking, Taylor Johnson, Daniel Ward and Blaine Stevens with Ambassador Group, Kevin McFarland for the annual golf tournament, Barb Sheldon and Tiffany Schmidt with the annual gala, and again, Barb Sheldon with the Business and Achievement Awards. These are just a few of the volunteers, and there are very many, um, which we are privileged to have and are sincerely grateful for all that they contribute. If you have an interest in attending any of the chamber committees or groups, please feel free to talk to these people or contact the chamber office. Maureen will, uh, will sign you up as soon as you give her that call. All right, um, officially, if there's any other business, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Hearing none, I will officially close this meeting at 12.22. Uh, let's take a break, we'll enjoy our lunch and then introduce our speaker shortly. I'd like to introduce our special guest speaker who is one of the most decorated players in women's basketball history. She was the first three-time All-American in program history a three-time three All-Big Ten selection, and a three-time academic All-Big Ten honoree. Lindsay led the Gophers to their only Final Four in program history in 2004. Her jersey, number 13, hangs in the rafters of Williams Arena. With her return home, the Minnesota Lynx won four WNBA championships. She has been part of uh, more than 300 wins in the league. She also played professionally in Turkey, Russia, and the Czech Republic. And I, and I hope I can, I'm getting all these right, otherwise I'm in trouble. Lindsay was a key piece as, as a part of the Team USA and World Championship and Olympic competition where she played for two gold medal teams at the World Championships and has also won two Olympic gold medals. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to present the winningest player in WNBA history and our Minnesota Gophers women basketball coach, Lindsay Whalen. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. How's everybody today? It's a great crowd, it's a great crowd, it's awesome. It's good to be back, White Bear Lake. I've been here a few times. My aunt is actually from here, so i um, been out here a few times. So, how's lunch, good? Yeah, thanks for the coffee and the uh, and the chocolate. That was a nice little pep. Um, I don't know if anybody, anybody watched our game last night? Yeah, a couple, yeah, a couple rides online, or maybe, anybody there? Anybody at, William, at the barn, right? Yeah, nice, good, you braved. You got inside into the nice 70s, right, where it was nice and nice and warm. Um, I tell her, I always try to tell people, like we've hired someone from Texas and Mississippi, that it's usually only one week like this. So I really need to. Right, we only can have like five more days of this, otherwise I'm really in trouble because I said it's just one week that's really bad, and then it's all, it's always how it is, right? So, but the next next week's looking not great. Anyway, so. Where was I? Game last night. Yeah, so I need a little caffeine, a little chocolate because um, we lost. Oh man, we shot 30%, so we got to work on shooting drills, obviously, a little bit more. Um, kind of fell asleep because I was tired. Then I woke up, had a bowl of cereal at about 2.30, 3 o'clock, got back to sleep around 3.34. And so uh, got up, watched the video twice, watched the game twice this morning, and now I'm here. So thanks for the coffee and the chocolate uh, to kind of power me through the rest of the day. Um, today, so um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a, a whirlwind of a year. Uh, played my last season in the WNBA. Uh, we um, were coming off of winning a championship in 2016, uh, right? And then or no, 17. We always win in the odd years. So this year, hopefully, we can we can keep that going, right? Right. As a season ticket holder now too, I want us to <laughs> really go for it. But um, went off of that year. Uh, decided right. I mean, pretty soon after I got the U of M job. Uh, in April that I was, this was for sure gonna be my last year. Now we waited to the end just to try to kind of minimize. Um, it kind of, I didn't want really a send off year where it was, you know, every place you go, they're giving you gifts and this and that. And like, I don't want that, I don't want that attention. Um, just wanted to, to focus on the year and there's enough going on between um, coaching and recruiting and um, practicing. There were several days this summer where I, I'd go and play in practice with the Lynx and then I'd go coach a practice at the U of M. And so I slept very good those nights because uh, I was about six hours on the court those days. So, um, but anyway, so announced uh, my retirement at there towards the end of the season and 
Um, after we uh, unfortunately lost to LA in the playoffs, I had about four or five days and then it was to the E right away. So um, it's been kind of a whirlwind season. It's been a whirlwind of a year. Um, but it's been, it's been fun. And it's been, um, obviously we got up to a great start in our non-conference uh, schedule. We were 12 and 0, we were ranked 12. Expectations are here. Um, now as a coach, it's, it's been interesting these last probably two weeks really dealing with adversity because we're two and six in the Big Ten and we're coming up against some teams that are a lot bigger than us and, and have some great players. And so it's just all about now keeping us together uh, and making sure we're all headed in the right direction. And so uh, what I thought I'd talk about today was how we're doing that and how uh, we created um, what we call the gold standard, um, just kind of, our, kind of our values and our motto at the University of Minnesota and our women's basketball uh, program. And now more than ever, having this is, is what we need to do um, when you hit adversity. It's easy to do all these things when you're 12 and 0, right? Everybody's talking about you, things are great. It's a little harder when you're two and six in the Big Ten to do all these things. But one of the reasons I'm really proud of our team right now is we're doing all these things still. We're in the gym, we're working hard. So um, so gold standard, what is it? So now we have a G, the G, right? So, so what I, um, with our days with the Lynx, I always said this, no matter what, um, all of our, you know, me, Rebecca, Simone, Maya, um, Cheryl, um, Jim until he went and just did uh, Timberwolves, um, Shelly, kind of the group that's been together for a long time, we were always really good to each other as people first. And so we always, there's gonna be days, ups and downs, wins and losses, but at the end of the day, I always knew Becky had my back. We always were really um, in touch with things that are going on in everyone's lives and making sure that we're all doing really well because there's high there's there there's wins and losses and, and you're in the newspaper when you win you're in the newspaper when you lose right you're on TV when you lose all those things right and so all those things it's like when you're in the heat of the battle if you want to be successful and win at the core being good to each other as people first is always something that we were able to do and that's why we had four championships and that's why everybody on the Olympic teams that I was on that's why they were on those teams, because they were great at basketball, but they were really good teammates first, and they were really good people first. So when you get a combination of that, really cool things can happen. And I was able to be part of it from the Olympic team and then with the Lynx. And so I want to have that be kind of our staple here at the, at the U of M now. And that's how we're going to build our program, is that we're going to treat each other really well first. Right? Obviously, we're going to hold each other accountable, and sometimes we're going to have to have card conversations. But at the core, our whole team is always going to know that everybody is behind each other, no matter what. And I think this day and age, more than anything, with social media, with a lot of the different negativity out there, more than ever, I think when you're in a group, you need to have you need to have that, so everybody knows that no one can crack that foundation. And so these last two weeks, we found that more than ever, we've had to be really good to each other, because it'd be easy to say it's her fault, it's coach's fault, it's so and so's fault, right? It'd be easy, right? Because we because we haven't found that success. Um, but we've stayed with that. We're, we've stayed respecting each other. We've stayed good to each other. And so I'm really, really proud of our team that we've been able to do that. And I told them last night, when we break through, when we start hitting some jump shots, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really fun. That brings me to outwork. So our, our the O and gold standard outwork. You know, it's, uh, you know, we get, um, you know, you get in a season and, and you get, um, you know, so many practice hours, but what are you going to do to outwork your opponent? What are you going to do to outwork Purdue, right? What are you going to do to make sure in your off seasons that you're coming back the next season a better player? Because I guarantee you those Purdue players did that last season. Because our players last night were saying, man, she didn't make those shots last night. Odin, right? Those of you that were there, right? Hit clutch shot after clutch shot. She didn't do that last year. I guarantee she was in the gym every day last year working on that shot. And now she's having success, right? So take a lesson from that. That's how you all work. That's how you do it. So now we've kind of seen that, right? Now we need to all work. We need to keep working. And, and, and we are, but I think now, after you start to see some teams really have some success against you, you start to see, oh, maybe I'm not working as hard as I need to be. Maybe I could be doing more. And so I think we've taken some, some pretty solid lessons with that, especially in the Big Ten. Um, the L, I always want our team to be leaders in our community. And so everybody's going to know we're women's basketball players at the U of M, right? We're tall, um, you know, not me, but... Most of us are tall. You know, I hope everybody's taller than me. We need to be, <laughs> especially after playing against Nebraska. And who else was that? I was just like, my God, they're huge. <laughs> Michigan, Michigan. We were 12 and 0 going into Michigan. We were 12 and 0 going into Michigan. 
And I'm like, all right, you know, road game, Big Ten game is probably gonna be tough. We go into Michigan, I'm like, they have five grizzly bears. On the court. <laughs> I'm like, they got a couple girls that have been up in the UP of Michigan chopping down trees for the last 10 years. And I'm, I told my coaches, I was like, we need, the, we need more of them, more of those, right? And I love our team, don't get me wrong, I love our, I love our women. But we're, you know, we're small in stature in some situations, and I'm like, for so for recruiting, I'm like, we need some big girls. We need some, oh, we need some grizzly bears, right? We need some grizzly bears. We need some kids that are up in northern Minnesota right now, you know, ice fishing, and they got the, they have the auger, you know? You know that's not good enough. I got it. You know, we need those kids chopping down trees, setting up the ice fishing hole. We need those kids. Ooh, I'm sorry. So anyway, so everyone, we're gonna stand out. So we have to be leaders in the classroom, in the walking the camp, walking around campus, right? It's what it is, it's how it is. You know, you're different than, you know, the normal college student, right? We're paying you, to, we're paying your entire tuition for you to come here, so we have to be leaders, right? We're, we're all gonna walk around with this maroon and gold stuff on, so you have to be a leader, because everybody's gonna know that, right? And so I always want us to be, you know, participating in class, sitting in the front couple rows, all the things that all my teachers and all my coaches always taught me, it's true, it's true, they were right, they were right, you know? At times I probably question them, you know, I could sit in the back and be fine, but you know, do as I say, not as I did, right? That's the big thing. Um, one big thing, you know, if you would, if any of you would ever come to a practice, right, we always greet our guests. We always go make sure we're going and talking and introducing ourselves because you never know the connection. You never know the networking that's really gonna that's gonna pay off. So a lot of our kids, whether in any type of business that they're gonna want to go into or what they're gonna want to do, getting them to understand, you know, a face to face handshake, introducing yourself. Um, remembering names, right? All those things are going to pay off for them for, for years and years and years. So uh, being leaders is huge. Um, and then discipline, and then discipline. Um, you know, they're young adults, so they're finding their way. And so discipline has been, has been um, you know, something that we always want to instill. Um, it's, you know, whatever it is. Time management, that's huge, right? In college, time management. Um, being on time, that's my biggest thing is probably being on time um, as, as a coach just because, um, time is, you know, something that we, you know we all have the same amount of, and and we all want, we all need to respect each other's time, and so all those things as far as discipline, I think, and we we have a great group, we really have a great group, you know, not missing tutoring sessions, um, making sure you're getting your study hours in, all those things, um, introducing yourself to your professors and letting them know um, when you're going to be gone for travel and things like that are all really really big, so. Um, I feel like these all, so that's our gold standard, the, the, a little bit of um, kind of how I felt that we want to build this. We want to build this, and, um, you know, it's a different, uh, we're playing a different style. So there's a lot of little adjust, a lot of adjustments, right? A new coach comes in. They're used to one thing from last year. Um, when it was 12-0, and 0, it was like, oh, this is great. Um, you know, there's been a little more of a, I won't say, I don't want to say like a tug of war, but, um, you know, a little bit of, of that, um, you know, should we be playing man-to-man -man defense? Yes, we should, right? <laughs> we scored 60 points last night, should we have won? Yes, we should have won, we gotta make shots, right? Um, anyways, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Um, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so that's, um, you know, I think if you have that foundation, you have those those values as a, as a group, um, good things can happen. And so now for us, stay in the course, right? Stay in the course because, um, I've seen it work everywhere I've been when, it, when you really follow these things. And so it, now more than ever, when things aren't going well, um, that's when you really need to have it. And in 2010, with the Lynx, we were, I think we won 13 games, lost 24, I think we missed the playoffs. That year was probably the year we learned the most about each other, right? Because it was just us. It was just us in the, in the, in the locker room. It was just us, so we learned a lot. And so I feel like this year, um, you know, it's, it's a year of, a lot of growing, a lot of learning, and a lot of making sure we're sticking together, especially during these times, because there's no easy game on the schedule. <laughs> I've looked. Unfortunately, it's, here comes Ohio State on Monday, you know, it's like, whew, all right, good, they got, you know, six, five kids from Latvia, they're probably chopping on trees too, so, you know, it's, uh, and then after that, we go to Northwestern, right, and they've beat, you know, everybody's kind of beating everybody, and and I read a quote by a, by a coach, it's kind of a make and miss league right now. There's not much margin for error. And so I was just, um, I'm away here finishing editing. This is a new thing I have to do with a coach. Right? I have to create an edit to show the players, right? Cheryl used to just do that, right? I just have to watch and take it. Now I have to create it, right? So I've had to watch our game twice over 
sometimes it's like one possession here, one possession there, and that's a di difference in a game. So being disciplined, outworking, you have to do it for 40 minutes. Because if your opponent is, then they're going to win. And so we found that out a lot. In Nebraska, we had three great quarters. I don't know if anybody saw the Nebraska game. It was ESPN, too. It was actually really, yeah. So some of us watched it. Three quarters, right? Three quarters of great basketball, a couple missteps here or there, a couple lapses in judgment, a couple turnovers in the game. There's the game, right? So it's like, um, it's, it's, it's tough. That's why it's a great conference, the Big Ten. It's 14 teams, and whew. Like I said, I've, I've looked at the schedule, and yeah, we got to get more grizzly bears. Around here, so, yeah. We'll keep working. We'll keep working. But our kids are working hard. Trust me, they're, they're working hard, and they're doing um, everything they can. They're in the gym all the time, um, and now it's just committing to it and staying with it, um, especially when things aren't, the results aren't exactly uh, what we want right now. Right. So, questions? Anybody have anything? Questions off of anything? I've been overseas for yes, overseas Olympics. Anything? I yes. Got one for you. What's your favorite Olympic moment? Good, he asked me that when we were sitting down, so I'll give you a set up. No, I'll give you a completely different one. Um, you know, I, I, I said the moment that I found out and I got to call my parents. So um, they were just in just you know in shock and proud and all those things. But I was in Prague playing overseas and I got the call that I was gonna be on the team and so I called my parents and that was probably the that was probably one of the favorite, one of the best moments, and then winning, of course. My, a lot of my family was there, and they played the anthem and all that. And um, at the same time, too, it's like a, it's a lifetime accomplishment and goal. But like I was telling these guys too, like the next day, you know, I had a cold when I was in London at the Olympics. I still had a cold the next day. <laughs> it's like you know, your life just doesn't magically change. You know, we celebrated for a long time that night. I had a headache the next morning, I, you know, it's like I had to take Advil, it wasn't like I won a gold medal and I was just cured, you know, <laughs> so it's like, you work, you work, you work, but all those same things, still, life goes on, life goes on, and you're incredibly proud, you're incre no, no question, and, and you did it, but at the same time, um, that's why I think being, you know, through everything, being good to each other and a good person, that's what's, you know, creating memories and being, um, you know, being a teammate, being on, being on a team, those are what you really remember. That's what's really important because, like I said, you know, now my gold medal sits in my office for all the recruits to see, which is great. <laughs> but, um, you know, it doesn't do anything really for me now other than that. So, <laughs> sits there. Anyways. <laughs> yes? So, you've had some good times. You're in the middle of some bad times. What do you tell the players, how do you get them up? How do you, do you just trust the system? What do you do? Yeah, a lot of trust. That's a big word is trust. It's, and that's what we've had, you know, some conversations on just like trusting each other, trusting who is the 76ers, trust the process, that whole, you know, that whole thing. But it's true. It's true. Trust the process and trust what we're doing. Um, last night, I just felt for him last night because that's one of the best basketball, one of the best games we've played. We're just going to make shots at the right times. And so it's just like, I, there's nothing worse than. Like they're trying to make shots. We had, um, you know, a lot of guys with some great looks, and it just doesn't go in. So, but as a coach, you feel terrible because it's like you see them practicing and working, and they just don't go in some nights. And so, um, so yeah, I know they were excited for last night. They were really rubbed up. I think um, it's weird because everybody is always so excited for winter break, you know. And then it's kind of it's so long. It's like a month where they don't have class. And so I think by the end they're like. You know, sleeping in until noon and like playing Fortnite all, you know, it's just like, so finally this week, it's like, oh my gosh, they have energy, you know, they have really good energy. They were super excited for the game. I didn't have to say much yesterday because they were just off, bouncing off the walls and I was like, oh, they're back in class. They have routine, right? They're not just sitting in their, you know, dorms hanging out. They're out and seeing their friends and this and that. So routine's a great thing. Yes? As a, as a player to do with so you went through development. How are the students of today being developed as, as you look at as a, as, a, as a coach? Yeah, well, I think I was telling these guys at, the, at my table, um, we used to play we used to play a lot more, I think, than we used to just go play pickup games, and we used to play all sports more than kids play today. And so, um, so yeah, we're just going to play pickup for practice tomorrow. It's just going to be five on five, just winter stays. No, I'm just kidding. We won't do that. We'll have a little more. We'll have a little more control than just that. But I'm serious. Sometimes they just go play. You know, and kids these days don't. 
they don't just go play. Everything's really structured and everything's like, you have to do this at this time. And um, I don't know, maybe they do, but I don't see it as much. I don't see it as much. I see a lot of like going shooting with a specialized coach and cross over a cone and shoot a jump shot. Well, in the game last night, you might have crossed somebody over, but then you have a double team and then you got to find the open shooter. The cone isn't going to move. The cone can't double team you, Adam. The cone, the cone will not do anything. Right? Every time I... Yeah, the cone, it's better to play against an actual human being because they're trying hard and they want it, you know, and so that's how I grew up playing. So I grew up playing at the rec in Hutchinson, Minnesota. I grew up playing at the high school. I knew all the times that there was open gym and I would just go play and you just got to figure it out. If you want to keep playing, you stay. You win. You stay and you win. You want to go sit on the sideline and drink Gatorade, you lose. Out. Right? And then you sit there and you pout the ball. You know, so it's like you get mad. Get competitive. Right? Anybody can go in there and, you know, cross over two cones and make a jump shot. Right? Anyway. So, I love our kids. The next generation is um, it's going to be great. We just have to keep teaching, keep teaching, keep teaching. That's the biggest thing. Is not get frustrated, keep teaching. Yes. Looking back at your career, is there any advice you wish you had received to get you to the position you are now? Um, let's see where to start. Um, probably said eat better in college. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really learn the nutrition thing until later in my career. And even then I was very marginal. So I'd probably say eat, eat, eat a lot better and take care of your body, do all those things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing now, all the information we have about all that. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, not, not much else I can think of. It's just a different, kind of a different, uh, different time with, with all that. Um, more information readily available, so. So yeah, I'm glad we didn't have social media when I was in college, I'll tell you that. I think the word you used at one point was gritty, grittiness. Ah. Our team will be yes. gritty. Um, and that was always a piece, a uh, hallmark of your game. So, how do you help a kid get greedy? <laughs> right, yeah. Make him dive on the floor. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I tell you what, when we have had a kid really hustle, you know, a couple times we have a kid take a charge in practice or we have a kid dive on the floor, and everybody's standing on the baseline going, good job, good work. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? So we just fell almost into the stands. You're not gonna go sprint over and pick them up and everybody celebrate? Like those are the fun parts, right? So celebrating it when we do have those moments, I think more than anything as a coach and as is like positive reinforcement. And then when we're not, there's a flip side, right? They wanted it more. And you try to you know, make sure that they feel that a little bit too when they weren't tough or they didn't all work or they weren't gritty. But I think really celebrating when good things happen, when something like that happens. Um, yeah, the first couple of times I saw that, I was like, what is going on over here? Are they Maybe last year they were told, don't cross the baseline when you're not in, you know, don't come on the court. But now I'm like, get out there and get excited, right? We're in here and 17 below, right? Be excited about it. What was it like playing in Prague? Prague was a beautiful city. Anybody been to Prague? Yeah, beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, it was great. I was there for five years. I would have I would have stayed much longer um, if they would have had me. But they kicked me out. Um, yeah, it was great. It was beautiful. I mean, they spoke you know good English, good really good food. Um, so yeah, it was it was awesome. So I played. My first two years was in Russia. Then I was in Prague for five years. Then I went to Turkey for a year. That was terrible. Then I went to. Russia and then Turkey again, and the second time with Turkey was much better. So, um, but the team in Turkey I was on the first time they didn't pay us, so I left. Um, it was three months of, you know, three months of no pay. Um, I wasn't gonna say anything. I wasn't gonna go there. Right? Religion, politics, not not going right. See, we're talking about the gold standard here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I left and Pro I left Turkey. But Prague was amazing. Um, we had a nice little car. You know, we were just yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Really, really fun time. So um, Charles Bridge, all the all the sites. We did all that. By the fifth year, when people would come over, I just kind of would send them out. Right, the first year, yeah, I'll go to the Charles Bridge. I'll go to the Clamp Castle. I'll go to 
the main square by the third or fourth year. I was just like, you got it. Here's the map. <laughs> I'll stay here in my nice warm apartment. Any others? Yes. You mentioned Fortnite. How cool is Fortnite in college and even in professional? I mean, I hear some crazy stories. We've got our kids. We can ground them from it. But how crazy does it get when you get into college? And yeah. Well, so, yeah, I didn't even know anything about this Fortnite. I knew a lot of it from, like, the NBA guys playing when I was with the Lynx. And, you know, I would hear the NBA guys playing it at all hours. So, anyway, my first experience with Fortnite this year was we had a – preseason workout of conditioning and so the team I was like it's 258 you know it's three o'clock is where is everybody they come trotting out at like 259 somebody was late I was like oh this is just great now I'm up you know it's like the last thing now I have now we have to like you know do something punish whatever now we have to do an extra workout it's like the last thing I want to do just show up on time you know anyway I'm like what was going on somebody was playing Fortnite and everybody's watching because it was at like the last level where they was about to win right so I, I had no idea you know here's the thing too as a first year coach it's like I didn't even know there's a PlayStation in there right in the team lounge I'm like get rid of that PlayStation are you kidding me if they don't want to do that in their apartment it's fine but not here so it's just like it's like I've learned I learned a nice lesson every day it's like you guys are playing what I'm like there's a PlayStation back there yeah we've had a PlayStation back there okay well, we're not having a PlayStation back there anymore. <laughs> Ruin that for yourselves. It's like, jeez. got 20 some hours in the day to play Fortnite. We have, we asked, at that point, it was one hour that day. And we're in there playing Fortnite. Yes? So I follow your Twitter handle, and you do a lot of the winning way with your basketball yeah. players. Do you do all your own social media? No, no. I, I, I don't do much. I, actually, I've gotten a little more lately. Um, we have people that do that now. I mean, we have, uh, I shouldn't that sounded bad. Um, we have social media experts who do that um, at the U who are really good, and that's our specialty. So, um, so yeah, because it's just too much. Others, you know, it's like too many other things to be worried about all that. And, like, you know, a post almost has to go out every day because you're, you're constantly selling, constantly recruiting. And so no, we have like we have that. I, I'll still do some though. I'll still do some. I came up with, with the one yesterday. I said outside bad, inside good. Williams Arena, seventy degrees, and I took a picture of the. Uh, I took a picture of the Maui stand. We have this uh, picture like this smoothie stand with the umbrellas. So I was like, you know, it's a thousand degrees below outside, but inside. Umbrella, umbrella drinks, you know, seventy degrees. So I don't know. I thought that was funny. So it, got, it got me going for the day, uh, and then but I try I try not to do t a ton of social media too. I mean I'll do some, but I don't know. There's just so many, you know. Somebody tweeted me this morning. Speaking of the winning way, which um, Carly, our assistant coach, came up with, which was great, um, brilliant, you know. And they came up with they come up with so many things. Like there's so many more creative minds than me, which is great. Um, but somebody tweeted me so much for that the winning way, you know after last night's game. But hey, you know, it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. You'll get up on the floor. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? So that's why I say after social media, because if you read into all those things, that was probably the one negative too. And I was just like, whatever, because there's like a bunch of other positives. So that's what's hard about, you know, for students too, because they're younger and that, you know, they, you know, obviously I was like, yeah, well, whatever. But moving off to the side, if, you're, if I was 18 or 19, I don't know if I'd be able to do that as well, right? The social media is tough. It's tough out there. Yes. As a former official, I want to make a statement. I really am impressed. We need to talk. <laughs> it was last night, but I'm saying. But even last night, I mean, they they're playing hard. They're let, they just got to keep shooting, keep playing hard. Uh, but they're showing respect. Uh, even you on the sidelines, I haven't seen you throw a tantrum yet. Uh, I that's, that's coming. Well, but. I, yeah, I try, yeah, I mean, because I, I, I get it, you know, it's like, there's so, there's so many quick judgment calls, so, yeah, I mean, once it's done and a call's made, you got to try to move on, so. Um, it doesn't do you very much good. It doesn't, it doesn't. It right makes you feel good in the moment, though, I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> <laughs> last night, there was a couple. Ooh. You said it. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. No, they've been great. They've been fine. They've been fine. Um, it's but when the shots aren't going down. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I'm a former college player, and when they're not going down, they just are not going down. Yeah. And yeah. it's going to come because they're showing good form. They're taking good shots. It's not a matter of taking a lot of bad shots. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're hoping that you're going to be around for a long time. Talk a little Me bit too. about how you're approaching the recruiting. Because obviously you're, the, the team can be as strong as you're able to bring in the talent. Right. Like I said, after, let's see, well, I'm going recruiting uh, tonight. I'm going to all the lakes to see who is out there with the auger. <laughs> who is out there shoveling the snow? Who is out there cutting down the firewood for the family? And those are the kids we need. No, um, recruiting is constantly, it's nonstop, it's 24 7. That's, a, that's because, yeah, it's just, there's a graduating class every year and there's a new class that has to come in. So, um, so I'm going recruiting tonight to a game, and um, we have three people out tonight recruiting. So, a lot of Tuesdays and Friday nights are now with high school games. Just, um, so, I mean, tough kids, tough kids. Um, played the game the right way, shared the ball. Um, and then a couple that can just go get a bucket and just go, you know, at times, plays are going to break down. Somebody can just go score. Um, and we've got a couple of this, I mean, Kanisha this year has been, has been great. So um, we need a couple more of her. But, um, but yeah, and kids with just, uh, you know, kind of fearless, fearless kids, like, you know, really confident that, um, that no matter what, they're going to be able to get the job done. So, um, so, yeah, excited to go. I'm excited to go tonight. Watch some future Gophers, hopefully. Yes? Um, I'm curious, what do you tell um, the kids when they're playing and they have a mistake not to let that setback affect them psychologically? Yeah, I mean, you have to have a short-term memory and you have to have this next play mentality always. Because that was one thing by the end of my career, I was like, I would take losses and I would take like, really hard. And so it's easier said than done, for sure. That's why I said, you know, the kids that you can get that are really just confident and just natural and, and what they are um, you know just prideful and, and doing that's what we that's what we really that's what we really need um, but yeah it's it's a hard it's a tough thing because you can you can only you can only you can say it but you know they have to go do it and so you know you keep encouraging you keep saying you're doing the right things um, all that um, and you try to make you know like the other day I said other than all you know I said we're going to have different assignments for you. You're going to have to guard this player, and we're going to do pick and roll this way, and we're going to focus on this. But I'm like, at the end of the day, you have three main jobs here. You have energy, you communicate to your teammates, and you're a good teammate. Other than, you know, they know the gold standard and everything. But those are the three things. You focus on those things, right? Try to just narrow their focus rather than I have, like, a thousand things I have to worry about. If you do those things, hopefully it'll it'll pay off. So, um, yeah, it's a hard part, though. It's a hard part with sports is being able to stay, stay with that confidence. So one in the back, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, younger kids playing uh, multiple sports instead of concentrating on one sport? Yeah, I mean, I play. It's different now, but I played multiple sports. I played tennis and track throughout high school, and so I was always, I'm always a big proponent of that. It's different now, though. It's hard. I mean, I think to a certain age, it's great for sure, and then I, and just with the way it is now. There's a league in the fall, and there's AU, and it's just constant for basketball or hockey or whatever it is. So, um, I would, I, but I still think through junior high and your first couple years of high school, playing a lot of sports is really good. And we still have some, we still have kids who are recruiting that are playing multiple sports. So I, I think it's a good thing. I, I would always say that it's a good thing. Um, but at the same time, it's like if somebody's really interested in basketball, or really interested in tennis, and that's what they want to go for, I wouldn't necessarily. Um, you know, say no to that either if I was in that position. It's hard. It's tough, though. It's a, it is a tough thing. Any others? Yes? What did you take away from uh, basketball coach when you were in college as far as that goes? Do you apply a lot of those kind of things to your Somewhat, yeah. What from what I can remember, it's you know, it's um, a lot of from a lot of from Cheryl, a lot of from Gino, just from the coaches I've had recently. But some stuff from Pam, some stuff from Pam, and um, she really gave us a lot of discipline, and and she really honed in defense is what we need to do to to take our team to the next level and into a Final Four. So um, so yeah, some of that stuff I've really carried on because it's worked and been successful. So one other hand, yeah. Uh, how does that? 
lifestyle balance work for a WNBA player who goes and travels overseas and then do they have like another job or how does it all work? Yeah, so when you're in the middle of like I call it the cycle. <laughs> the WNBA cycle because you play all summer and then you usually have a week and then you're overseas if you're going to play year round. And then you get a week at Christmas and then you get a week probably in the spring, maybe a week to two weeks and then you're in the WNBA. So you maybe get a month off throughout the season. So you're playing, you know, 11 months out of the year, 11, 11 and a half months out of the year without a break. And so that's why you see like Diana took a year off um, from the WNBA, just because it gets to a point where you need a break, your body needs a break. Um, other players have taken off. Um, I took a couple years off of overseas, um, just because we had such a good thing going with the Lynx. I couldn't, I didn't want to not play for the Lynx because I knew every year we had a chance to win the championship. Um, but yeah, it's um, Candace Parker took off a half a year in the WNBA. It's just, um, yeah, you don't, you're just constantly playing, but you're making good money and you're constantly getting better and you get to live in great countries. So there's a lot of plus sides. So you just have to balance it because we you know, I'd always try to schedule family to come overseas with, you know, the second half, especially the second half from like right now from Christmas through April or May, it gets really long because you're over there for five straight months. Um, but yeah, you're constantly playing. No break, really. All right, well, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, uh, everyone, for attending, and thank you, Lindsay, again, for coming and speaking with us today. Uh, again, one last thank you all to our sponsors, Grandma's Bakery, Carlson Chiropractic, Malax Corporate Ventures, Bedberg Tire and Service, White Bear Lake Magazine, and Avalon Security. Thank you again to Keller Golf Club for hosting this wonderful event. Uh, don't forget to save our date. The, the date of the golf event has come out. That's June 7th at an Onika Ridge again. Uh, same format as the past few years, so looking forward to that. Oh, it won't be. We're going to change it up? No. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, as, um, as well as the number of networking meetings, if you haven't seen the weekly facts, come on, pay attention uh, to that. That usually has it scheduled all pretty well. So thank you all for attending. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.